case about this picture. Uh, for me, uh, makita ko sa picture is uh, graph siya na symmetrical, na parang pababa, from a maximum point going down sa both sides. Uh, standard distribution. <laughs> Normal distribution, standard normal distribution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wait, the Gaussian curve. Hi, I'm Tara. I'm John Tabuliano. I'm Jim Pachez. Hi, my name is Kirk Light and Today, we're going to teach you how to do normal, normal distribution of the graph. Normal distributions are typically used in probabilities, which is represented by histogram of data that are distributed or spread out in different ways. There are cases where the data tends to be around a central value, and it has the same mean, median, and mode. The bell curve constitutes about 50% of the values less than the mean, and 50% greater than the mean. The total area under the curve is 1. Measuring the spread or how wide the numbers are in the curve is identified through a standard deviation. 68% of values are within one standard deviation, 95% are within two, and 99.7% are within three standard deviations. Together, we immerse on a very powerful function that will allow you to create a bell-shaped curve. Right, Dara? I agree. Here are the commands that we're going to use. R-norm, P-norm, Q-norm, and D-norm. So, R-norm is like this. It generates n random numbers from the normal distribution with zero, mean, and one standard deviation. Syntax is like this. P norm returns the probability of a quartile Q like this. Q norm returns the quartile for a given probability value P. D norm gives the density function for values X. To create an ideal normal distribution to test the waters, you start Y using R norm. That goes like this. Data 2 is the data set that we're creating 1,000 random numbers, taking the mean and the standard deviation from the original data. There are two ways to display. The histogram in the idealized normal distribution as a line over the top or you could draw the ideal normal distribution as a histogram and have your sample as the line. Suppose we want to know the probability that one of our people selected at random from the group will be less than 160 cm tall. We need to convert this height into a value of z to convert 160 cm into a number of standard deviations 
from mean. To do that, convert any value y from a distribution with mean y and standard deviation s by calculating z is equals to 160 minus 170 divided by 8. It is less than the mean height 170 centimeters, so its value is negative. Now we need to find the probability of a value of the standard normal taking a value of negative 1.25 or smaller. This is the area under the left hand tail of the density function. The function we need for this is p norm. We provide it with a value of z or quantile provides us with the probability we want. The answer to our first question is just 10%. Next, what is the probability of selecting one of our people and finding that they are taller than 185 cm? First, we convert our value of 180 cm into a number of standard deviations. Z is equals to 185 minus 170 divided by 8 is equals to 1.875. Then ask what probability is associated with this using p norm. Wait, this is the probability that someone will be less than or equal to 185 centimeter tall. We are looking for the complement of it. To do this, we type 1 minus p norm, 1.875 or z. The answer to the second question is about 3%. Finally, we might want to know the probability of selecting a person between 165 cm and 180 cm. We have a bit more work to do here because we need to calculate two z values. So, let Z1 be 165 minus 170 divided by 8. And let be Z2 is equals to 180 minus 170 divided by 8. The important point is this. We want the probability of selecting a person between these two Z values. To do this, we subtract the smaller probability from the larger probability. In this case, we have 1.25 as the largest or represented by Z2 and negative 0.625 as the lowest represented by Z1. We have a 63% chance of selecting a medium-sized person or taller than 165 and shorter than 180.